Hi, I'm Lara St. John, and welcome to Learning from the Legends. In these lessons, we're going to work on learning how to perform the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. This is one of the most popular works ever written for violin and is a piece that every violinist should study. This is one of the most common pieces to prepare for a recital or an audition. It's also a great piece to study because of its importance in violin literature. We're going to walk through this piece measure by measure and along the way we'll see how to practice, how to perform, and we'll learn some ideas for how to interpret this great work. The first movement of the Mendelssohn is distinct in that it begins with the almost immediate introduction of the melodic theme by the soloist rather than the orchestra. The opening melody has several challenging moments and for the soloist the first measures of the concerto are very exposed. The soloist begins the concerto with some tricky shifts that require isolated repetitive practice. The first shifts we're going to isolate are in measure 3, shifting from the G to the E. And then in measure four, with a shift from the B to the G. Shifts are such an important part of good violin technique. And this piece has a lot of them. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to practice shifts correctly. You have to be very methodical on each and every one. Here are some simple guidelines. As a rule, any shift or short passages should be practiced in repetition until you can play them 10 times in a row without missing anything. If you miss the shift or make any mistakes, start over again at zero. This is a self-discipline that you need to develop as a habit early on, especially in big works like the Mendelssohn. It may not be any fun, but the repetition is absolutely necessary in order to learn the feel of the shift in your fingers and in your ears. If you can play it 10 times in a row, you build confidence that you can play it that same way every time in a performance. To get a feel for finding your way from one note to the next, we're going to use, in this case, what's called an intermediary note or a ghost note. Think of it as a stepping stone for your fingers. In measure three, when we shift from the G to the E, we simply move the finger playing the G, the first finger, up to the B as an intermediary note before placing the E natural. First, practice with the intermediary note audible to develop a feel for where the note is. <laughs> 